Hi, my name is Lorraine Watry and welcome to my studio. I am a watercolor artist and I've worked with watercolor for 26 years now and I thought I would start a new series of videos where I go over different tips, tricks and techniques for working with watercolor and hopefully these short videos will help you in your journey and if you have a question or a technique that you would like to see please comment below and I will try to accommodate that in a future video. This tip and trick video is going to be a, a series of three videos and I am going to go through how I would paint uh, this aspen scene that has the sky, the aspen, and uh, kind of grouped aspen, some grass, and then reflection in water down here. So it kind of encompasses a lot of different landscape uh, subjects. So the first thing that I am going to do is to mask some of the trunks of the aspen trees. And when I mask things, I look for the objects that are going to be easier if I go ahead and mask them so that I don't have to remember to uh, paint around them or that are small and would be harder to paint around. And so uh, some of the aspen trunks I've uh, placed some lines to note where the trunks are and others I am just looking back at my photograph of, as I am doing this. Now some of these may go darker later but uh, I would rather go ahead and save some of those things now and then later if I want to I can uh, make them darker or give them some shadow. And I use a hors d'oeuvre, plastic hors d'oeuvre pick on a pencil to uh, you to apply the mask, and uh, it just has always worked well for me. I like how it works, and I do have some video that uh, talks about the tools I use for masking. Now there are also some trunks in here for some of the evergreen trees and. I uh, am not going to mask those so that later on they're going to be dark anyway. So I'll try to just speed this up and then the next part of the video will be putting the sky in and showing some of the sky reflection in the water. I have now dried the masking fluid and I am going to uh, start putting the sky in and I will be using cobalt blue and some cerulean and part of that uh, reason for that is because the cobalt is um, kind of a quintessential blue for, for a sky, it's a really good color for that and the uh, cerulean is usually seen more toward the horizon. It's a little more turquoisey. There's more atmosphere between the viewer and the horizon, so it uh, often will look lighter and uh, more turquoise or, um, yeah, more cerulean look than the cobalt look. So I'm pulling out the cobalt, and next I will get some cerulean out. And I have a big pool on my palette. It's probably, oh, maybe two or three inches across. And I want enough color in there because, uh, enough of the pigment, because I am going to be painting uh, wet and wet. And that just gives me a little more time to get the color on. I won't need as much turquoise or the cerulean, but I do have um, that out if I want to mix it with the cobalt, because sometimes I will do that as well. And then the final thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to um, block a good portion of the painting 
with a cloth or you could use a piece of paper or something like that and then I am going to spritz a little bit of water right up along this tree line up there um, so that when I uh, go to paint it will have um, a little bit of water along the edge where the trees are and you want a spray bottle if you're going to do this that gives you both big and small drops you don't want it to be uh, the misting type of spray bottle and what that will do is that some of the edges of the trees then will have a little bit of a, a, a softer edge to them because the water that is on those edges will work with the blue that I will be placing on there to uh, kind of blur into the tree uh, form just a little bit. So I'm coming kind of close to the edges now but I don't have to come right up next to the line partly because I have the spray on there and just kind of go across and then I'm going to start actually with uh, just pure cobalt and I will be drying the back of my brush just a little bit because I don't want it too wet. And I think I will, oops, I noticed a spot here. This sky is just going to be a uh, blue sky without clouds. I just noticed a spot where I missed putting any uh, water on. And the way to do that best is just to lean your head to the side just a little bit. Okay, so I have the cobalt in there, and then I'm going to go into some cobalt and cerulean blended together just a little bit. And I'll get some of those edges in here. And so along the tree edges, I want to make sure that I'm giving it interesting shapes, and any water that uh, the paint grabs onto while I am putting this on that is uh, where I sprayed earlier it will give me some hard and soft edges and it sort of helps create that um, tree line a little bit right there and then I know I want a couple places down in here as well where the uh, sky is showing through and then as I come to the right I will be adjusting the color a little bit so now I'm going to clean my brush just a little and go get just the cerulean and then I'll dry the back of it and then come in with a cerulean because I want to change it so that it looks like it's going a little more turquoise and then I'm going to go get a little bit of water on my brush and actually wipe my brush on the edge of the container and then as I come to the bottom I will use that clear water to give me that feeling that the cerulean is fading um, as it goes back toward the horizon, that there's a little more atmosphere um, between the viewer and the horizon. Now this is nice and dark right in through here, but this didn't quite keep as much pigment up there, so as long as my paper is slightly wet still and I can see a little bit of shine on it, I'm going to go back along the top edge and I do need to be careful with this because if I put on paint that is too wet I could end up with a bloom happening and I feel like that's working and then while this is still slightly wet I'm going to take a smaller brush and a few of the places on the trees I'm going to adjust because I don't want them um, to be too um, oh, solid edged here. I want a little bit of some softer edges. So I'm using a little bit of water and the smaller brush, cleaning my brush on the towel just to, or drying it on the towel just a little bit so that I can um, keep that brush from being too wet and I'm just adjusting softening right around there just a little bit so that 
um, those top edges will be a little less um, in focus. And then when I go to put the color on the tree, some of the edges will sort of fade over the sky uh, color a little bit and some will be more vibrant yellow. So some will have um, a little bit of a tint of blue to it depending on how I place it on there. Okay, So I'm just adjusting these edges just a little bit. And those aren't bad, but I'm going to go ahead and soften some of them so that I have some soft edges over in here as well. And this is something that uh, you wouldn't have to do. It's just the way I want to try to paint this. So um, just kind of playing with some technique here. And it is a little early on some of these edges because they are moving uh, the the color as I'm placing some water on here. Um, it's a little wet uh, still, especially over in here. This has got a little bit of pool of paint right there. Um, I might actually go ahead and adjust that edge by just pulling some of that pigment over into this area a little. And then that way I have lifted some of the color and I'm using it in the tree area. And then just I'll soften a few of these edges. Now this could also be done if you wanted to adjust some of your edges. You could do this once the pigment is dry. Just go ahead and let it dry and then you can come back with a little bit of water um, and soften some edges. So you wouldn't have to do it right at this moment. Okay, So I think I will leave it that way. And uh, then I'm going to go down and put the sky color down here uh, in the water area. And uh, because generally when you have a reflection of a subject into water, if it is darker up here, then it'll be lighter down here. Or if it's lighter up here, it's generally darker. It's usually the opposite of what is happening on in the land. So, I mean, that's not a hard and fast rule, depending on what's happening with the light or what the object is. Uh, and also, usually the objects in the water are um, usually not as in focus as your objects on the land, partly because there is generally a little bit of movement. Sometimes you can get a very glassy-like surface, and then there won't be much uh, movement down here. Um, sorry, move this back down. The... Um, other thing is generally the color in uh, the water is usually a little more neutral compared to um, the vibrant color of the objects up, up above. So for the water, I am not doing everything. I'm not doing all of the trees and all of that right now, but I am going to go ahead and put the sky in, and I do want um, some color among the trees. So I will actually be wetting the whole surface, but I will only be painting the water in some places, or the sky reflection in some places. So I do have my cobalt and cerulean out still. And I am going to add just a little bit of some Quin Rose to the mix because I want it to be just a touch um, more neutral, a little kind of purple feel to it compared to uh, the sky that's up there. And I did darken my sky here compared to what's in the photograph. So I'm not doing quite um, exactly what the photo is showing me. I will be pulling out a little bit more cobalt. Okay, and I have some cerulean out still, so that's good. And then I'm going to wet the bottom. I think I'm going to get a uh, flat brush for that. It'll go on a little faster. Now normally um, I might put the trees in, the, the yellow trees in first, and then uh, put the sky around it. And um, So I'm kind of doing this a little backward, but uh, just to break this, up, this uh, video series up into three sections, I uh, thought I would do uh, the sky and the reflection of the sky at the same time. 
So this is something that you could use for other scenes where if you have a sky that uh, you want to reflect. Now if you have clouds in your sky, um, the uh, reflection will be the reverse. So if you have a cloud going at a diagonal this way, then down in the bottom, it would go the opposite direction. So it would look, it's hard to turn my hand that way, it would look sort of like that. And um, so you want to make sure that your reflections are uh, the angles that uh, would make, uh, make it a reflection, make sense. And I could have put uh, clouds up in that sky if I wanted to, um, just by adding some lighter areas. So you don't always have to go with what your photograph is showing you. I'm kind of looking at the moisture level on the paper right now. Um, I don't want it too wet. I'm going to go ahead and get some of the Quinn Rose in with my cobalt and I'll probably add just a touch of that into the cerulean over here so that I have a little bit in both. And then I'm going to use the cerulean first because it's at the top. Just a little bit more. And I'm drying my brush just a little bit. So when I say at the top, I mean at the top of this shape. So this shape will be the, re the reflection of the sky in the water. And so I'm coming up right by those trees and this will have a softer focus feel because I put the water on and I'm not going to be um, painting this whole thing right now so the uh, reflection of the sky will be softer edged down here. All right, and then you could even leave some little light areas like there's movement in the water which I kind of like so I think I will be leaving those. And that would also be um, if I had sky up in the uh, sky, clouds up in the sky then you would see some of that uh, reflection happening too down there. And I want some of that to come over this way. I actually uh, think I need to go a little darker. So while it is still wet, I'm going to get more cobalt out. Dry my brush and then get in some more color because by having uh, water on the paper uh, first, I have added water to the mix and so I want to make sure that I have enough um, color so that when it dries it will be dark enough. And depending on where the viewer is standing you may see less or more of your um, reflection. So if you're standing very close to the water you may see um, a different view than if you're farther back and uh, a different angle. So uh, depending on what your um, view is, you may not see, um, for instance, in this case I can see the top of this tree right here um, is, is in the reflection, but depending on if I had moved when I took the image, then um, the top of the tree might not have shown. All right, so I am using just a little bit of water on this edge to keep um, some of the blue from pushing into my yellow too much. I do want it to have that softer edged feel, but I don't want it to take over too much of the yellow. And so I'm just using, my brush, my brush is very dry. It just has a little bit of moisture on it. Okay, so that is a step uh, one, um, part one of this uh, image and then I will come back and there will be two more uh, lessons. The others might be a little longer depending on what I need to do, but I got the masking fluid on, I started the sky and got uh, the sky reflection going in the water and um, that would uh, be generally how I would work with um, a painting such as this. And uh, the next step will be getting some of the yellow color going in uh, for the trees and some of the reflection there and then possibly some color on the landscape. So I hope this was helpful for you to see the start of a landscape with a sky and trees and a reflection. 
And if you have a tip or trick or technique with watercolor that you would like to see, please comment below, and I will see you in the next one. Have a good day. Bye.